Hello, everyone. You're listening to Pixelated Audio. Today, you're listening to Chris' original soundtrack, composed by Berlinist. Alright, welcome back to Pixelated Audio, a video game music and retro gaming podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm Gene. And today we're going to be playing music and talking about Grease, a recently released indie title on Steam and Nintendo Switch. Yeah, the game's only been out for about a month, but it's already making a huge impact in the indie community. Yeah, uh, getting a lot of really good reviews. Uh, people are in love with it. Everybody who's played it that I've talked to has adored it and just said like you got to play this funny story uh i had a coworker bring up this game to me just completely unprompted and i got to be like well you know i'm actually going to be interviewing the composers of this game in a few days <laughs> so i was really the timing couldn't have been better right 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 right, right. <laughs> anyways so uh while gris is a beautiful game visually it would still fall flat without a soundtrack behind it. And we think that the music of Greece not only is a perfect accompaniment to the game, but also a pillar that helps deliver the message and experience composed by Berlinist Studio. And we're very fortunate today because we have some members of Berlinist joining us today. Um, Marco is running a little late, but Gemma is here and uh, we're really happy to have you on. Hi, uh, this is Gemma. Uh, I'm a member of Berlinist and, well, uh, me and all the other members have been you know, the responsible ones to, you know, for the music of Chris, a very interesting project. Uh, and, well, we are based in Barcelona and we've been together working as a band uh, since 2011. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you are in Barcelona. It's what 11 o'clock at night for it us is. thank you so much for for waking up <laughs> nice and early to to chat with us today it's, it's gonna be okay. a lot of fun it's you're welcome be... <laughs> <laughs> awesome so uh first let's talk about that track that we came in with it was called debris and uh just a an excellent way to start the game and start the show it has this really melancholy start to it it's almost like it's stripping you away with these kind of pulses, stripping you away of like everything that you hold dear. And then 
at the end of the track, it starts kind of like the sun is coming up, you know, from between the clouds, and um, it gives you this, I guess, sense of hope. So I really yeah. liked it. I've r- there's this really interesting thing about it where I feel like those swells just almost are like a shortness of breath. Oh yeah, it's good not point. A, it's not a feeling mm-hmm. that I feel a lot from the music that I listen to, but it's very impactful. And then you have a lot of percussive elements. I, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you can tell us about the track, actually. Yeah, well, actually, I mean, what you said <laughs> fits perfectly with uh, with this piece. So, debris uh, is played in a moment in which, well, basically, the game begins after the presentation, and the environment, the landscape, uh, we see. It's just this. Now it looks like, you know, uh, it's a desert place with, you know, things and rugs and things like as if everything has been torn apart. And we see the protagonist, you know, wandering among ruins. It's like a foggy atmosphere. So it's like, you know, like a dreamy place, like as if you had woken up from a nightmare or something like that. Right, right. Um, But I think that the images uh, helped us a lot. Uh, convey this sense of loss you know, you feel of everything and even if at the end there's a you know there's a light of hope um, you know we wanted to uh, transmit it with no compression in sound so this uh, we, th- uh, we thought that could help us uh, you know uh, transmit or reflect this sense you now that you were uh, commenting uh, about this moment of the game so I think it fits, you know, with, with what you said <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> I got to say, it does have this, it does mirror that bleak image, that, that very mm-hmm. early part of the game that is is pretty much void of, of color and yeah, just so much empty space. And w- mm-hmm. as you go through the game, you start filling out, you know, the different colors and stuff. I think that the music also kind of grows with it. And uh, this is a, a really cool track to come with because I think as we get through the episode, we're going to be hearing more um, tracks with just it has just a little bit more sense of, of, you know, you're, you're going in the right direction. You know, things are, are, mm-hmm. are turning around and uh, this, this soundtrack is incredible. It's, it's different, uh, you know, thanks. like a lot of, a lot of the stuff we play on the show usually is more melodic. Mm-hmm. And so we're really excited to to talk about this today, um, this Great. soundtrack, because it's very different than stuff we usually cover, but we absolutely fell in love with it. And so again, just thank you so much for, for joining us today to, <laughs> to chat about it. So uh, thanks let's, for your words. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's quickly talk about the game and then we'll uh, move into some more music. So Grease is a platforming adventure, uh, almost resembling like an illustrated film released for the Nintendo Switch, Mac, and PC on December 13th of 2018. So very, very recent. It was published by Devolver Digital, which we also covered another one of their games earlier. They're just a heavy hitting studio. They are killing it right now. They have they have been publishing some of the most amazing indie titles and it's just like one after the next. They just keep putting out gold. And this is no exception. It's just a, a fantastic game. And so, uh, yeah, published by Devolver and developed by a Spanish indie developer, Nomada Studio. And Nomada Studio is a small game developer based in Barcelona, Spain. From their website, it says that after a few years spread around the world making AAA titles and interactive experiences, longtime friends, Adrian Cuevas and Roger Mendoza met artist Conrad Rosette back home in Barcelona, who's already interested in bringing his art to video games for quite a while. And I guess the three hit it off and started working on their very first title, which is this, and uh, stating that, you know, they wanted to bring the artist's unique style to an interactive world of complete wonder. And I think that they they hit all of those marks and really did a, you know made a big splash in not only the art world but in the interactive gaming world as well. Yeah, uh, Brian only put this on my radar maybe a week ago, and <laughs> yeah. I listened to the soundtrack. And then when I played the game for the first time, literally two hours ago, the impact of the the union of the art and the music hit me, and I was just you know I was transfixed. I could not take my eyes off of the screen it's such a beautiful union and it really is a game that has to be seen to be believed right and it's funny because you've been listening to the soundtrack yeah for a while now but you had hadn't played the game until today and yeah I, i've been playing the game like religiously for for a while now and i absolutely love it but why don't we go ahead and get into some more music the next track we're going to get into is titled grease part one and this is composed by berlinist
That was Grease Part 1 by Berlinist, composed for the game Grease. This is the first time we, uh, really the, the opening kind of cutscene, right, where we see the uh, protagonist kind of opening her mouth and letting Singing. just the, the sound just just flow. And uh, this, it, just a incredible track. And is it weird that I sing along with it? When I hear it, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I couldn't, I couldn't take the image of the opening scene out of my mind as I was listening to that piece. And it's crazy how quickly it just mapped and is now in my mind. <laughs> Gemma, Gemma, hey, tell us about this track. Yeah, well, now, um, now that you said this, I, I, when you said that, maybe if it's normal, if you can sing along with that. Um, one thing that was really clear for us, especially for Marco, is that uh, the, the composer uh, of mainly all the soundtrack from Greece and the one who led us into her world uh, is that the music shouldn't be complex in terms of quantity but it had to be easy in terms of chords and, and melodic lines so that people could sing I mean it, that uh, he wanted to be complex in, in terms of quantity arrangement but easy in this sense so uh, that there is uh, you know this line that that people can see, there is a very clear uh, line. Yeah, in and, and it's language agnostic too, so it really helps because it, you know I don't have to know the words; I can just. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, right? Uh, I, I okay. like the other version better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so Gemma, Gemma, can you tell us about the vocalist? Yeah, well, uh, that's that's me. <laughs> and, <laughs> it was a loaded question, yes. But. Yeah, and well, basically, yes, this is uh, the first time that uh, the voice uh, of the protagonist appears in, in the game. And well, it's, uh, you know, as, as far as, as I'm concerned, I can say that it's been a, you know, very interesting process. Uh, because, you know, I had to, you know, get into her shoes in, in the sense that, you know, she's a, a young girl and, you know, as, uh, that's not usually my voice. So I had, it's like if, if, if I was an actress, so I had to, you know, sort of get into her world and try to express it with the voice. As you know, the game has no dialogue. So everything that, you know, has to do with uh, audio is about music and is transmitted, you know, with uh, voices in some occasions. And well, it's been a very interesting process, and I have to say that it hasn't been easy <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. uh, you know it, um, Marco has uh, really pushed me <laughs> a lot to to get you know this this sense of um, uh, purity and you know from her voice, but at the same time to express all that had to be expressed. So it was very very important to you know to have uh, that this voice had an identity. And uh, it didn't have to be perfect, but it had to be really, you know, personal and kind of pure. represented the character. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of leads me into a question. Like, as far as vocal work goes for Berlinist, are you primarily the, like, I guess, in charge of vocals or how, how do you guys handle that? Well, I'm, uh, you mean with uh, previous works or? Right, right, work? right. Okay. Well, I'm in this sense. I'm lead vocals, but uh, Marco also uh, is the one who uh, designs uh, the vocals. I mean the 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 melodies, and so we work together. But Marco is the one who mainly, uh, you know, together with the music, has designed the vocals and you know the the progression and everything. Um, at least, yeah, in this game, has he has put uh, a lot. Uh, onto this and we have worked together he has guided me a lot uh, especially you know in, in the most emotional moments and you know especially to to build up the, the character right, right. It, it's important to have a good leader kind of orchestrating mm -hmm. you know not yes. only just the composition but the direction behind the audio there's very clear yeah. art direction both in terms of the music and the design and the well the visual design i mean it's this is probably one of the most focused games i've seen in a long time in terms of clarity of what it's going for and it sounds from what i've experienced of it to hit it right on the mark right mm -hmm. so it sounds too that um like you know marco being a great leader and stuff like that 
how did how did you get involved in Berlinist? How how did how, where did you start, and how, how did you uh, I guess make your your path into working with this team? Well, actually, uh, we met in 2011. It was uh, you know uh, exactly it was a project that uh, Marco had. We started working together with also the other member of, of the team, who is Luigi. And, well, we started uh, creating, you know, the sound and the, uh, the personality of what the band would become some years after. And, well, then came Gris. And I think it's been, you know, it has arrived a moment in which we had you know, we, we had uh, been working together, so we were quite consolidated uh, as a band and also, you know, about the roles, about what we wanted to achieve. So we were working quite uh, in the same line. It was, I think that's very important when, when a project like this uh, falls into your hands. Obviously, we, we count with the trust that Nomade Studio had on us. Uh, but yes, it's, it's more or less has been like that. That makes sense because you can always tell a really good, um, like jazz ensemble or something, you know, groups that have had a, have had experience, like a personal, like bonding between each other for a long time. They always have Mm -hmm. a much more authentic sound than, you know, just throwing a bunch of, you know, musicians into a studio, you know, cut an album and then head out that have never met. So, and we can hear that, I think in the soundtrack that there's a lot of, how do I say camaraderie and and uh, interplay, a, a sense of yeah. interplay in in how the uh, the sound is delivered to the player and uh, mm-hmm. I, I think that um, everybody who has experienced this game so far can appreciate that so it's very interesting yeah there's a sense in jazz if you, you may have I mean, people who are listening may, may have heard the term being in the pocket, but it's more than just being in exactly. time with each other. It's also that sort of natural communication you have just from developing that relationship over time. And it really comes through in the soundtrack. Right. So, uh, mm-hmm. Gemma, tell us about maybe your early, early beginnings. Where where did you start in your musical career? OK, well, my, uh, you know, my relationship with music started quite uh, well early in my childhood. I used to attend to music lessons and, you know, the classical ones, especially, uh, you know, focus on singing. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. learning uh, music language, um, sing, you know, all the on a score, singing all these, uh, you know, combinations of musical uh, notes and, and all this. Uh, I also did some examination. So and that was, you know, in my childhood and it was a little bit stuck there. Uh, I continued doing other things. But then music came back again, so I've been working on different projects uh, lately of different styles uh, with different people until uh, I, I got to work on Berlinist. There was yeah quite, quite a long time after that. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I, there is something that I, I would like to say. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the times, you know, it's like what you said before, it is like there is a very um, strong... Um, scholarly components on, on composers or musicians, right? In my case, I have this little formation. But, uh, for example, uh, Marco and Luigi are, uh, you know, they, they have learned by themselves. I mean, Marco has an, an incredible uh, way of, of uh, getting and playing and in understanding music, but he, he hasn't, curiously, he hasn't made any, you know, studies, uh, formal studies about music. Mm, right. And uh, I think that, uh, in this sense, this gives a lot of, um, uh, how can I say that? It gives a lot of authenticity and it I think it's important not always to pass to this filter of, you know, formality. So I think sometimes uh, this combination and, and this uh, impulse of, you know, feeling music in this sense is, is very important. Uh, at least that's, that's what I think. Something that we've noticed just from talking to a lot of composers who work on games, many of them are self-taught. And, um, yeah, right, right. And I have to wonder if there's just a certain kind of flexibility. I mean, naturally, if you are self-taught, but... The game design process is a flexible process. You can't come in expecting it's going to be the same every time. So maybe there's just something very natural about being fluid with your process and saying, well, for this 
game or this project I'm working this way and this other one I'm doing something else that just lends itself to that kind of relationship yeah well it's like as uh, you mentioned before it's like music is like you know a cult some way <laughs> and uh, yeah um, but I was classically I, trained I, I think I, I started <laughs> to break out of some of those patterns myself but I get what you mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's um, but yeah I, you know according to what you said now um, maybe in this sense is what um, has helped a lot you know in the composition in the composition sorry uh, especially Marco is you know gaming itself in this type of project um, he's a very experienced gamer he's a he has a passion for video games and I think that understanding both languages the language of video games you know the sequences um, understanding it as a whole not only as music but also you know the dynamics the mechanics and everything plus his knowledge of uh, you know his sensitivity and his knowledge of music is what has brought you know this creative process to be you know very very integral very you know as a whole and it's like um it's what you say is like creativity uh and formality in music it doesn't have to be you know perfect in the sense that um we we didn't want especially well marco talked to us about this um this music didn't have to be that perfect it didn't have to be that concise so neat as maybe you can find in other uh, video games because uh, what was important here was to um convey to transmit to reflect this humanity uh of, of the character and also going along with the contemplative nature and the experience, the experience uh, game. You know? it's like um, it's like we, we have tried you know, a different approach uh, with the music for for this video game. It's like more like um, try to feel it as when you you both said before that it, it was very emotional. So we wanted to try uh, the the player or just the people who listen to the soundtrack to feel uh, and live the music and, and you know try to to get this feeling of, of, of playing live and, and just uh, live just live music uh, as, as it was uh, when, when you hear when when it's being played live right I, I think and I think you guys, we're able to capture that very well. Why don't we go ahead and get into another track, actually. Uh, this one is um, a really excellent track. I couldn't not put in. Gene heard it, and he was just like, oh, we got to get this, gotta one. Get this one in there. Uh, it's called Windmill, <laughs> and it's just it's a fantastic track. Let's take a listen to that, and we'll be right back.
Mm. That was Windmill, composed by Berlinist for the game Grease. It almost has like this, these deja vu moments, these kind of um, like time lapses that fade in and out. And the track starts picking up and then it kind of mellows back out towards the end. And I, I just felt like this, this, for me, this is like the quintessential dream. I think the mistake I made was listening to this at work while trying to do other things. Really, <laughs> It's such a delicate track, and hearing what Gemma said earlier really came through. There were a lot of areas where I could hear the notes were played just a little bit out of time, but it didn't matter. And it, it doesn't matter. It's just it works so well with the texture. It's You said it's dreamy. It's, it, you know, it compresses and expands. There's this sense of weightlessness. You right. know, it, it, it's not even necessarily a good dream. It is just this kind of ambiguous place where time is kind of just still right right and yeah it really really captures that mood i think what you were describing the <laughs> the dream the yeah. dream yeah all right Gemma, can you tell us about windmill yeah well basically that's uh what you said it was the 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 aim uh, throughout the whole game but also in windmill um, we wanted uh, to um, focus on this uh, sense of uh, you know transmitting the feeling transmitting the um, uh, let's say the um, the mood in this sense now as you said uh, in this type of world in this type of landscape that she is and um, from time to time you get uh, some little progression so it's like calm and smooth but some you know from time to time you hear this you know musical notes that tell are telling you that you're approaching somewhere or you know that um, that remind you that you are into this type of journey that you don't know where it's going to take. So, um, as you said, uh, it's, it's not about perfection, but it's, it's about this um, transmitting, you know, this this conveying of this uh, right. of this mood. And um, um, what uh, someone told us, uh, you know, talking about perfection, and what um, one um, member, one responsible from uh, Devolver told us when we had the chance to, to meet them, but uh, regarding music, he said, you know, music is not always perfect. So hmm. we, we took that, especially Marco took that very, very seriously. And he says, yes, that's it. I think that's, that's the key, you know, and, and that's uh, the way, um, you know, it had to be going along with this, the, the essence of the game. And we, we have tried, you know, in this, uh, in this uh, track, in Windmill, there is like this sense of uh, the sound, the noise, uh, well, the, the, the ambience that you get is like uh, this play, like the, in the old records, you know. Right, this, right, this right. Where you get that kind of slight record hum to it, yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be neat and, you know, really clean in that sense. But so, that also gives it its authenticity. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 that's that's uh, that's the thing. Um, listen, just uh, one thing. May I say uh, something? Um, Marco has told me that he can join us in, in five minutes. Is it okay if he joins? Of course. Absolutely. Yeah? yeah just let us know okay. when he's ready and we'll introduce him and have him talk. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, because finally he can make it, so he, he, can, he can join us. So if it's okay for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so um, I guess, yeah. Gene, do you want to... Maybe we could talk this, about the story. This or would something. be a good time to go through some of the more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, well, let, let's talk about the game for just a little bit. Uh, the game follows a girl named Greece, the Spanish word for gray, who becomes lost in her own world. And I was gonna kind of paraphrase this this quote I got. Um, it's on Steam, and, and their marketing team is doing a much better version than I would. So I'm just going to read their version. <laughs> it says, Greece is a, a hopeful young girl lost in her own world, dealing with a painful experience in her life. Her journey through sorrow is manifested in her dress, which grants new abilities to better navigate her faded reality. As the story unfolds, Greece will grow emotionally and see her world in a different way, revealing new paths to explore using her new abilities. And uh, I, so I think that was just really well put because that does that's exactly how I feel about it. You know, it, it, there, there are no words in the game. It's, it's, it, there is no story that's, that's being told verbally. And so you kind of manifest the story on your own during the experience. Like I said, the, the story itself, th there is a story, but it's just, it's so subtle and so delicate that you have to let your mind just kind of 
open up and and soak in everything about the game to to really understand what's going on and it's not just you know the artwork it's a combination it's the art the music it gives you the sense of loss despair pain and how the protagonist Greece or you as a player kind of deal with these feelings and it leads to the game's outcome it's different from a lot of games because Greece itself is free of dangers or death you can't die in the game it's you, you know you were telling me earlier gene mm-hmm. that when you're playing you're like oh you know like i at least i'm not dying every five seconds you know <laughs> it's it reminds me of an indie tile that it was you know very polished and taken care of but i'm not being you know completely slaughtered every every second i i, I thought about that too when i was playing i was like you know it, it's more about you know getting from point a to point b emotionally than it is trying to solve these ridiculous puzzles or or um you know fight these you know insane bosses or something like that. it's right. a very different approach it's not a test of skill it's definitely it's there's an experience laid in front of you and it's there for you and, and taking all of the things out of the way like arbitrary deaths or overly complicated puzzles so that you can experience the art and i you know i personally found myself just taking in all of the various different it's captivating. Yeah, it, it you is, can't, really. You can't help but just soak it in. And uh, I think that was, I think that's what drew me to the game. So do you want to tell us about yeah, sure. Rosette a little bit? So I was not actually familiar with Rosette before you introduced me to him in this game. but That's I, why I asked you to do the research notes. So right. It wasn't so just me talking this about was, it. This is pretty straightforward. This is just the bio that he has on his portfolio website and says, Conrad Rosette spent the first 29 years in Terrassa, his native city, among boxes of crayons, felt-tip pens, and notebooks, the other part in Barcelona surrounded by paints, moleskine notebooks, muses, colored pencils, and in the company of his gray cat. It already paints a picture here, right? His grease cat. Yes. Uh, Drawing has been his passion and a constant feature in his life since he played with his brother at drawing everything they liked until years later, he drew inspiration from women to create the muses, his most personal collection. That is my favorite collection too. That's the one that I seriously want to get like a massive wall canvas and put, you know, my living room. It's pretty, pretty incredible. It, all of his art that I've seen has been amazing. Uh, and there are photographs of him working in his studio and, and you can tell this is a person with focus and passion and really just incredible sense of design and, and color. I mean, that's a lot of what goes into this game is there's this nice painterly watercolor style. I don't even know how to describe it because I'm, <laughs> I'm not an artist myself. Where's James? Where's James? Not a visual artist. So he received his education at the Joso School and as and at the Faculty of Fine Arts in Barcelona. Thanks to the spreading of his illustrations through the internet, he started working for Zara. There he says he learned about his trade, about regularity, and how this, and how to study styles of reference illustrators. A year later, he launched himself as a freelance artist, and since then has worked for different brands, ad agencies, and publishing companies. He's exhibited works in galleries and museums such as the MoMA in Virginia, Spoke Art in San Francisco, London Miles in London, Tipos Infamous in Madrid, Artivistas and uh, Miscellanea in Barcelona, and he is a professor of illustration at the School of Design, BAU. Yeah, he's... he's done a lot yeah he's all over the place. <laughs> uh yeah he specializes in hand-drawn art so all of his stuff is I, I mean and you can see it like this this game is his canvas you know in that sense it's just it, it looks exactly like his artwork but in a digital how do you, interactive medium yeah and in, yeah. in, in in motion and there's this dynamism to it that is you know it just gives it a new dimension right really yeah that actually leads me into my next question which is for marco who is joining us a little bit late but we're very happy to have him marco welcome to the show and uh why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself ah okay well um marco living in spain (laughs) since uh eight years right now i'm from italy um i'm composer from berlinist and also a gamer (laughs) <laughs> uh, we, we, heard, uh, we heard but um, but that's it i mean <laughs> that's <laughs> it i don't have much to say about 
Gemma did a really great job of talking you up, so it, it's yeah. good that we got that introduction before. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we have okay. heard a lot about you, so we're, we're, we're glad that you could join in. Um, this okay. is just such a relaxed show, so I'm glad. Uh, yeah, so, but anyways, I want to continue. I had a, a, a question for you, and yep. uh, I was curious the, the thought process mm. and how you had to maybe change what you guys previously knew, because I, I noticed you guys have several albums on your website that you've already released. How does that translate into what you guys needed to do to accomplish the soundtrack of Greece? Uh, well, well, let's start that uh, our previous um, works, uh, which are not so much, but they are sung. <laughs> we have an LP and it, uh, we made some soundtracks for uh, short movies um, and stuff like this. Uh, also uh, digital apps. Um, but the transition is that it was not so difficult because uh, Greece um, is a game that um, helped us uh, because uh, we already um, produce music with that kind of feeling. Uh, so uh, it was not so difficult in terms of uh, harmony, melodies, and uh, creativity in terms of musical creativity, but was difficult in terms of um, technical. Uh, stuff because uh, the main difference between uh, previous proce musical process and and this one was that in this one uh, we talk with programmers so um, and and <laughs> and I was surprised how how uh, the mind of programmers is similar to uh, my mind and we were like always. Um, uh, it was easy to talk with them, but of course you have to respect some kind of um, uh, structure that are, are not musical structure, but they need a precise timing for the music for because they prepare the script. Or um, you have, uh, and it's not just uh, put, um, putting music on uh, over the images of the game, but it's also um, you have to respect the. Um, what the programmers need to accomplish in order to, to get the game done. We sense. both spend a lot of our days either as programmers or talking to programmers, so I think we understand <laughs> the, the other side <laughs> <Okay>. of that. <laughs> and yeah. and that, and that good? That that's confirms my, uh, my um, whole thing about, you know, programming is a form of art and i think that <laughs> every every field has wow. a bunch of art and creativity in it so it's <laughs> so well, i get you i get you i, I would uh yesterday i was thinking about asking the programmers for a portion of their code because i have the image of uh, of course i have um, uh, one image from conrad in, uh, at, at my place uh, uh, on a wall, but I would I would love to have a portion of the code also. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I should do that. I should just like make some wallpaper with like well, what, <laughs> some yeah, my, yeah, some of my best maybe work from the the end the end of the game. Uh, it, they made like uh, difficult um, was difficult for them uh, to process some. Um, some portions of the game because they have to convey music, um, uh, get the player the possibility to do stuff while it was easier to just let the player go through a, a cloud and end the game, you know? So all these kind of things are reflected in programming. And maybe I, I will ask them to give me a portion of that part <laughs> to rem to oh, that's awesome. always remind of the, uh, of the work. Uh, of the hard time. Of the hard yeah, times. because uh, from about Greece, a lot of people uh, is, is talking about, of course, Conrad or maybe the music. But I think that the really uh, difficult part was uh, uh, for uh, Adriana Roger. So, have... Sewing it all together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, but, uh, they, that's it. I mean, I don't know if I answer to your question, but oh, I, I, oh I, I, more, more definitely. Uh, these, okay, okay. these questions are open ended. Anyway. Yeah, and you know, I wanted to ask <laughs> okay. a question, and this is for whoever is, wants to answer it. How did Greece come to be a project that you worked on in the first place? Yeah, well, basically, uh, we knew each other before the project started, um, in the sense that uh, we we made our music and we knew about Conrad's work. 
and we followed each other. I mean, we knew that we existed. And once he uh, made a poster for one of a concert, and well, we thought, mm, you know, considering uh, your share, I mean, he's a very, as you said before, you commented about all the work he's done. He's like, mm, maybe we don't have the budget to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> and but he says, no, 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 no. It's, I mean, it's something that it was a synergy that was created. Just for the art's sake. I mean, uh, so from that moment, uh, we started, you know, um, you know, we knew each other, uh, we knew about other work, he followed us, he, we continue following him. And, you know, time passed, years passed, I think maybe three years after this, um, he said, mm, I want to make a video game with, uh, you know, my art. What about Berlinist? So he just said to Marco, well, I have this idea. Can you please put the music to it? So Marco said, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I think he, he can also explain his feelings when he yeah. he received something. I mean, maybe he can explain yeah, it better. Well, well um, as you can imagine, for me, it was like a dream, uh, entire life dream, because as a gamer, I had the possibility to, and musician, I had the possibility to combine uh, these two. Um, Both worlds together. Passions. Exactly. Uh, but about how we met, uh, Nomada Studio. Uh, it was at a concert. Uh, Conrad joined. What uh, was at a, a concert that we made uh, in 2013? 13, I think. Yeah, yeah some five years ago, more or less. Mm -hmm. well, it was a special concert. People were all around us. The the stage was in the middle, and we played without um, uh, amplification, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, without cables, without anything. It was just uh, natural instruments. So. He get, uh, he got really moved by the show, and that was um, how our friendship started. But more than friendship was like, uh, okay, we respect each other as artists. We are always in contact. Um, sometimes you need something, I can help you. Sometimes we need something. We 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 were like helping each other a lot. But then when Conrad came up with the idea. Um, well, Corrad, Ruggeri, Adrian came with the idea of the game. Um, they thought about not just uh, the music that was perfect, because of course they need something really. Uh, I, I have to say this, but it was like sad in a mix between sad, dreamy, uh, emotional. We uh, thought of, uh, they thought about us for this <laughs> but <Yeah>. also <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but i have to be honest uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, of, of course we we like other genres uh, especially we love um, icelandic music sigur Rós, bjork uh, we love a, a, anything coming from iceland we have anything coming from uh, we, we listen to a lot of music but um as I, I listen to a lot of video game music too. So I suppose that for them was also easier to communicate with us um, gaming uh, uh, stuff. You, you mean like if you have to explain uh, to a musician what is a platform, what is a script, what is a, it could be uh, slower, the process. And uh, in, uh, like you guys were already that, familiar with the 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 process or at least the ideology of what would need to possibly go into making a game rather than somebody who had absolutely no you know like what is a video game kind of thing and going into it completely blind yes um Gemma and Luigi they are uh, they've played a little bit during um, their free time but they are not players uh they're not gamers mm -hmm. that's true uh, so um I played quite a lot of games, especially I played a lot. If I can buy a new copy of Shadow Colossus, I would buy it <laughs> at each year, you know? <laughs> so I, I'm that kind of <laughs> um, gamer. Uh, so uh, what is important that I'm, I always be uh, surrounded by programmers for music or for uh, work, uh, other works. So. Um, more or less, uh, I knew, already knew how mm, that works. Also, I'm interested in how gaming uh, games are uh, are done. Uh, so uh, I document, <laughs> I, I, I read a lot of documents about this. I don't know how to do it. I cannot make a game uh, by myself. But yes, I know more or less 
how Unity works, um, what can could be the problems during um, uh, while you make a video game. So that may, uh, made things easier for us because uh, Nomada told uh, to me about gaming um, needs, about the game video game needs, Greece, uh, in order to be developed. And then I can I could uh, explain to Gemma and Luigi uh, what we need to do um, in the game. That makes that makes it, sense. It helps to speak the language, even if you're not the one who's actually making the game. I mean, we have, have talked to musicians that don't, and they've talked about how much more difficult the process is when somebody else has to do that translation work, if you will. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, and then in Greece we had basically three kind of languages in order to explain stuff. There was the programmer language that was like, okay, here uh, there will be a storm. We need that, we need this, we need this. Okay. And that was called red language. That was here there will be a storm. And he has to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I want the player to feel that. And that was us. Okay, there will be a storm. We need to uh, get the feeling of a storm. Maybe we need uh, wind elements, organs, strings. We have to think about it. And so that was like a very rational uh, way to explain what we need to do <laughs> and another very explosive way to explain what we need to do. And we were just in the middle. That makes sense. Well, let's get into uh, another track. This is an excellent one. It's very short. Uh, it's called Chiasm and composed by yep. Berlinist. And we'll be right back. All right, that was Chiasm, composed by Berlinist for Greece. Wow. I Every time we've been playing these tracks, I've been closing my eyes. And <laughs> I know. I'm like, Gene, Gene. I know. He's, he's Brian is looking at me trying to get my attention, and I'm just like lost <laughs> in, in a space. It's a really good track. It is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> can, can, you guys, can you guys tell Thank us about you. this track? I don't know. Um, what? Uh, sorry? I didn't. Oh, I said, uh, can you guys tell us about this track? Ah, okay. Um, Jim, me? Okay. Yeah, well, okay. Now that you're here. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, um, that, uh, this track uh, is one of the easiest tracks in terms of um, uh, uh, putting in the game because the sequence is really good. Um, I mean, in terms what, of what do you mean by you, that? You, I mean that um, uh, the, this passage, this um, the slow, the no slow one's just going down the slow, yeah, right, um, is already beautiful. So um, I think that helps a lot, uh, and also uh, player um, freedom is limited. So uh, for when you have this combination, you can you have like uh, you don't have to think about okay what the player will uh, could do in that moment. You can just light, so you can um, use uh, these moments to convey the um, uh, more uh, complete uh, tracks that uh, starts and end like a complete song and not something that has um, to uh, fulfill uh, the word. I don't know if I'm explaining this properly. <laughs> no, that uh, makes sense. That makes properly. sense. But uh, also, because of the structure of the slide, uh, we didn't want uh, a team, uh, um, uh, let's say, a song that uh, too precise in terms of tempo. Mm -hmm. We need uh, to, okay, now I'm on time, now I'm, now I'm not, like, mm, uh, irregular uh, entering 
uh, the tempo. So uh, the feeling is, is that of a song that is, of course, is, it follows a metronome, but not. Uh, in the synthesizers uh, are the only thing that moves on tempo, but um, cellos and are moving not on the metronome because we wanted to create this irregular feeling. Well, it's something that um, is everywhere in the uh, in Greece soundtrack. Gemma was kind of mentioning that, mentioning that earlier um, about the imperfections that you guys intentionally put in to have more of a authentic feel. Yeah, a bit of a looseness with the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th that's important because um, sometimes I the music is. I mean, when I play games, the music is so um, perfect in terms of time, time okay? Um, uh, that I almost forget that the music is there. Because uh, it's like when you start counting and you count without... Um, without thinking? Without thinking. Right, right. So uh, those, those little parts, uh, I think they help the player um, to feel... Uh, like something more natural, uh, more human, and also um, it's like uh, a, a, a little irregularity could be helpful to uh, be more focus focused on what are you hearing. If you are listening to a perfect uh, speech, for example, you will not focus on uh, all the content, but you will, will remind for sure the little irregularity of this of that speech right so we, uh, we tried this because we had the freedom to do that now no one told us no you can't so we uh, <laughs> that makes it easy yeah, that, that makes it easy yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and that was a very strong point from you know uh, the creativity point of view both from nomad studio or from the Volvo digital this is something that we really really appreciated so it's like this musical freedom and creativity mm. you, we've so, heard that, we've heard that the, from yeah that was the second time we actually spoke to uh the chris schlarb who composed the music for dropsy also published by devolver and they said basically the same thing they were given a lot of flexibility they in were like of, completely hands off yeah almost yeah. so that's that's yeah, yeah. that's a very awesome thing for a publisher to just give you know the the artist that kind of free will to create the art that they want uh you know whether it be music whether it be visuals whether it be gameplay and programming right and uh, yeah, it's a very important trait. And I think that's why they're putting out such great stuff is because of that that freedom that, that's offered. Let's go ahead and move into another track. What do we got next, Gene? We have Grease Part 2.
All right, that was Greece Part 2, composed by Berlinist for Greece. A pretty big contrast from the first one. Right, it, right. You know, it's, I'm going to just say some free association, right? Open, triumphant, free, <laughs> joyful. Like Those right. are the, the feelings that I get listening. I, I didn't get to this part of the game. I, I only got about maybe an hour in, but it, I can feel something very powerful and, and positive and positive but like you said authentic vulnerable open like this i don't know how, how else to describe no, vulnerable it, yeah. is a good word yeah. because i i you know, imagine the protagonist you know singing this and just you know kind of in that statue's hand uh just kind of finally being free of of her own mind and i i, I think this is a an excellent track i'm glad we we had this one here and I, i'm guessing Gemma, you have something to say about this track well, <laughs> it was very uh, intense for me as well, um, because, uh, yeah, it's Grease Part 2. It's, um, as, as you can hear, it's like uh, the main theme from Grease Part 1 is there, but has obviously another, uh, another intention. It has another color, uh, you know, if I can use that word. Yeah, good, good, good one, yeah. I like yeah, that. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what you said. Now, it somehow expresses some kind of joy some kind of well liberation also vocally speaking right so it begins at the beginning uh with you know sort of a, with a morning singing um when when i had to to do these vocals uh it was very important to follow uh, the images of of the game because um is a moment in which the protagonist uh, has you know a very um Mm, you know, special movement. You know, uh, moving sidewards. So it was very important to to follow the images and also so that it could match. You know, uh, my voice could match the images, and also you know it, there is a sort of crescendo that you know explodes at the end, and and you know uh, together with the music, it's it was very intense for me, actually. Uh, Marco, what was the direction that you gave Gemma on doing the vocals? For for the soundtrack, mm. yeah, yeah. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> he was very hard on me. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> no, but it, nah, no. Joking. Come on. Uh, uh, well, it um, um, well. Let's say that uh, there are uh, two things that we needed to um, uh, think about in that moment. One was uh, the vocals, and for me, it was important to not uh, give the player the sense of aging you know I mean you I don't want the voice to be the voice of a child but neither the voice of an old woman neither of a woman we want the voice to be like female but uh, if you uh, listen to it outside the game you have it has to be hard for you to determine what kind of girl is singing Okay, first of all, uh, it was difficult to do that. Was there any um, like voice shifting or was that just Gemma's voice? No, no, it's just Gemma's voice. I assure you, it's my voice all well, the time. That, that's incredible. That's incredible. There's some really high notes in there. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many takes did that, yeah. did that uh, require? Like how, how many hours in the studio to get those tracks down wow. <laughs> it was you know it was more more of a previous work before we got to the studio because once we were there you know that's you know we had to have every everything really clear and you know sharing our minds but as i said before it was a it was a quite interesting process but yes you know you have to try until you find exactly you know mm. if, if you feel at ease but also you know um uh, answering to to the needs of of the game and what marcus had before no yeah and also this happens because usually i design the voice with um, starting with instruments then you have to transpose that on a real voice and maybe uh, you played it with a piano but then you love that note that high note <laughs> and you try a lot to to get it with a, a voice also <laughs> so uh yeah yeah, yeah. We, but the idea here was like to um, i listened to a lot of voices different voices and what impacted me uh, the most were the um, 
uh, shunts from Greeks, Roman ages, but not like the gladiator. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, more like that that kind of singing that ha- helped uh, Greeks meditate, th- connect with the uh, um, I don't know with the the beyond. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with, it's yeah. Like spiritual thing. Spiritual yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Um, Uh, that was important to uh, to us to, uh, in a sense, get this kind of voice, like um, a single woman uh, singing in a temple, but in that way. The other thing was the crescendo of the instruments. We knew that in the last part of the game, uh, we wanted to create a contrast between the Cry, uh, uh, well, uh, of course, we know the game. I can say this <laughs> we, uh, with the cry uh, scene, the girl crying. Oh, right, right. And in that moment, putting the, um, uh, the, more, uh, the more happiest instruments, <laughs> <laughs> like there is like a, a sort of marimba, let's say, like this, a xylophone. Mm-hmm. But we wanted to convey a happy feeling during a sad scene with uh, children instruments <laughs> so uh, mm, and play the uh, last part of the music like uh, children we didn't think a, a lot about this Chris part too we made it like a uh, improvisation and oh, wow. we optimized that because when you see something that you really like like a painting like a, a movie whatever and you get that first feeling for uh, at least for me It's not, impo- it's not so important to, to shape it more than the necessary. If you get that first feeling, you need to stick with that. Also, if that feeling is shared with other people and all that people felt something in that moment. So for me, it was key. And for Gemma too, and for Luigi, that was important. So we agreed uh, to get this track, um, like the first feeling. Uh, and I, I suppose that this happened in another game, um, which is Hyper Light uh, Drifter, Drifter. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. uh, in which the, the main theme is a piano improvisation that they used uh, like that. And they optimize it a little bit, but then, if I'm not mistaken here, I, I knew that part. You can do it if you have a good track. Stick with that track because then you will come adding synthesizer, you will add uh, trumpets, you will, and you uh, maybe you can lose uh, that first feeling, which is um, we, when we played the track for the first time and we were all together, we like we were crying for our music, <laughs> right. so it was, it was if and we thought if is delivering this effect to us. Um, We we don't know why other people shouldn't shouldn't yeah, yeah. yeah uh, share that that's, feeling and that's how it comes across to yeah listeners like us. It, it sounds like you wanted to resist the temptation to overcomplicate it by trying to perfect it and yeah. capture something that you know, you, like you mentioned, just being very playful and there's an experience of just like getting it right the first time. Also, because the game is wants the player to um, uh, flow in this world and um, sometimes uh, if we we see children playing music they just flow with the instruments you, you they play piano and then they move with uh, to the guitar and they are not thinking uh, <laughs> what are they yeah right. they are just feeling the instrument so we try this of course we try also to deliver a, a good product to Nomada <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but um, they uh, I want to insist in, on this point they were super um, good to us I mean I, I, they, at some point I, I think they were uh, they wanted to uh, close the project because Oh, they, they said yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. That's, like that. that's okay. good. That's, so, uh, Are you sure? <laughs> you know, and and so, um, uh, but no. Simply, they they were listening, and they maybe they share our um, feelings about the tracks because this is important in Nomada. Uh, the six people, uh, seven people, that are the core of the studio. Uh, surprisingly, we we are we get more or less all the same sensibility in terms of music, arts and video games. So it was easier uh, in, to communicate 
and express feelings with them apart from code notes and visuals i i think that and i think that together as and this is kind of reiterating on what we were saying earlier uh and what you were saying marco um about the kind of synergy between actually i'm sorry Gemma was saying this earlier about the synergy between your group but also now your group the 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 artist and the programmers all together and you know creative director and what have you all together are now forming this new synergy it's like this new element has has been formed and and delivering that together and not having those restrictions by a publisher or something has given you that creative freedom to be able to to do something that we have a a saying in america here you know go with your gut and 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 that's like (laughs) sounds exactly like what you guys are 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 describing to us just to go with that instinct feeling yeah it really looks like an uncompromised vision i mean technical constraints aside it, it it looks like what you had in your mind is expressed out through the the medium of the game. Right. I do want to talk about the gameplay. We haven't mentioned about the gameplay at all much yet. Um, (laughs) One of the game, uh, or one of the core mechanics, or rather the main core mechanic uh, or goal of the game is to unlock colors. And Rosette wanted to start with a black and white image and slowly add colors to it. In Greece, um, you know, the name, color, what have you. It's an idea that was um, kind of a full representation of her inner world. This 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 ideology, Greece, right? It's absence of it's color. Right? Absence of color. The, you know, the sound is 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 reflecting that. There's a lot of parts where there there is just very very subtle sound and very bleak colors. And as you um, start unlocking more and more, the soundtrack starts getting deeper and starts having its kind of colors added to it did you guys see the artwork and uh the direction the game was going and also build upon that with your sound composition well yes definitely this helped a lot it was uh you know going hand by hand with you know the art with uh, the coloring with everything was uh really really important so from the very first moment um you know when when uh, Conrad and and the team gave us, you know the the idea or you know the the very important elements of the zone or that had a touch a different color. Um, when they gave us that, it, it was mm, I would say not the easiest, but it was very uh, you know easier than in other occasions I imagine because it communicated a lot. So. Um, uh, the visuals and the art um, have uh, made the composition easier. A part of you know the the cooperative work that has been developed from the very beginning. So yes, absolutely yes. Art and and, and music have uh, have been synchronized from the very beginning and has helped uh, a lot. Right. I don't know, right. Michael, if you want to add something, but that's I think that's the the main core of, of the thing. Yeah. So uh, you know, apart from these creative you know creative freedom uh the visuals have helped a lot in order to um, transmit the color sensations or the feelings into music and and i don't know if i can say that Michael, but i think if i'm wrong uh, when composing um each part uh, you know each sound that you know is is uh, you know predominated by color um you know, colors and notes had uh, a particular role. I mean, um, when Marco composed uh, this part, uh, it was he had this information, uh, you know, as a as, as a leading one. I mean, the colors, um, the chart of colors uh, have been uh, from memorial times related to specific tonalities. I don't know if you know, it's like like a color chart. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. Notes. So, um, depending on each area, uh, you know, that, you know, it was, it had a color assigned. So also, you know, musically speaking, it was, uh, connected with a specific chord or specific tonality, right? That totally makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it was it, it was good for us, but it was not so good for the sound effects guy, <laughs> 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 because he, he needed to, uh, adapt each sound uh, f- uh, for each area and we wanted the sound effects to be 
uh, in the same tone of the music. Exactly. So oh, wow. in I order didn't... to complete the music, uh, didn't that. Um, we wanted all together ourselves and and Ruben, uh, which is, which, a, which is a great made, guy. Yeah, I mean, he's made an amazing work. The uh, music without Ruben is. 100 percent uh it lost a lot of power because of the sound effects that are so um precise in terms of uh, notes and um, tonality i don't know mm -hmm. so um uh, that's it it was uh each color uh, related with uh, abilities skills of the um of greece uh were delivered to us Uh, I think I, um, quite uh, quite uh, at the beginning, uh, so we can talk about um, the chords, the harmony. We wanted the, the main tone of each area uh, in order to create this kind of uh, synesthetic uh, yes. between uh, images and music and sound effects. <laughs> wow, there's a, a lot that went into this. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into our next track. This is more more frantic than you previously have experienced this far in the game. It's called Unagi. So let's listen to that, and we'll be right back.
That was Unagi, composed by Berlinist for the game Greece. This is the uh, the first track we played that has really upped the intensity, and I, I guess you would consider this a like a boss battle. It's not really a it's not really a battle. It, it's more like, a, like a quick like a chase. Yeah, a chase scene. <laughs> you know, like a scripted sequence. And oh, there's so much to talk about in that track. The oh. the strings that anticipate the beat, the beat itself that's hard to predict. The the vocals that are recontextualized to be a little bit a little scary and then that whole last half which is this recontextualized song where it's about determination instead of fear in the middle you have the that calm that calm before the storm again yeah. with that solo violin coming in and just really really bringing out the tears and then it just jumps right back into this explosion it's 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 a great track could you guys tell us uh, your thoughts and uh, share some opinions about this track uh, okay, as you said, um, that part of the game is a scripted part. You have l less control of the character. Even if I uh, can say that if you do anything, everything well in that part, you can get a prize. <laughs> oh, so, uh, maybe I just uh, yeah. didn't do very well. <laughs> um, oh, let me, let me uh, just uh, quickly say what this part is. This is when you're being chased. Unagi means eel in Japanese. And you're being exactly. chased by this ginormous, you know, <laughs> ink blot of eel. Exactly. So, uh, but if you have a limited control of the cart, uh, you need to um, get the sense of uh, no control with the music. Uh, so, what we tried to do is was to um, uh, get this feeling of uh, tension that you cannot. Uh, fill uh, uh, completely with controls so we need to complete uh, in that case the um, uh, the gaming part with music to deliver this kind of tension and the, the biggest role here is uh, played by the volume uh, we uh, get volume up yeah, yeah. okay uh, in order to um, give the player this uh, tension. So, uh, especially in the second part of the team, uh, we you don't know what comes next. So, um, if you get scared, uh, probably you, you you like uh, you can think about the game and what the game could prepare for you after. Afterwards. Right. So, um, which is funny because I didn't realize it was as scripted as it was until like maybe halfway through at the beginning i kept thinking oh my god i'm gonna get eaten no! <laughs> and the music would swell up and i would just start sweating and i was oh my god and then uh, eventually i realized like oh i, I don't think it can get me anyway so <laughs> i'm okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah it, here it's more or less like what happens in abdu uh the sequence in which you can move through the ocean uh, faster but you have less control of the carta we we needed i suppose that um, nomada needed um, the player to uh, focus on uh, the visual in that part and was easiest, easiest to them uh, to prepare the scene in that in that way uh, but we need uh, but they need the help of the music to convey that uh, anxiety exactly uh, so um you did a good job I, with it cuz i was <laughs> i was sweating <laughs> and, and it, it was out of my control <laughs> Well, also at that point of the game, you are almost in, in love with Greece, so with the character. Yeah, yeah. So oh, good point. You, want yeah. <laughs> you have empathy for her, so yeah. So you need to, um, you know, you have the music needs to to be scare, to scare you to, because uh, you want Greece to survive, and at that point, you never uh, died before. You cannot die, but if you haven't read about the game, if you don't know anything about the game, you think you can die. <laughs> I, I was sure that this so, is my time. I was like, I haven't. I've been pretty good so far. This has got to be it. <laughs> so at, that, at some point, I have to die, but then uh, that was the importance of uh, the music in in that place. But uh, also in the end, the end, uh, the last part of the unagi, we uh, we try in each track to deliver some kind of hope. In the last part of the song, we don't want the song to be every song uh, almost in Greece soundtrack um, ha, ha, uh, have that kind of uh, structure, like a difficult beginning and deep uh, middle part, and then 
the hope is in the end of the song. Um, Unagi takes this to uh, another volume in terms of intensity. Yeah. We, we talked about this too in the beginning of the show um, before you joined us, Marco, that it did sound like a, like a lot of the tracks do kind of offer that that glint of hope at the end. And I think that's what keeps you feeling like you, you're progressing towards something good. Carrying you through without necessarily just depressing you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and there is yeah, sadness and sorrow in the music, but it's you're you're right. It is I that track was definitely the most obvious, but I didn't really notice that structure until you pointed it out. But it it really does it's very effective for uh, creating a consistent structure, even if the music is quite different. Right, right. Yeah, the, and it, that's, that allows you also to listen to the f- full soundtrack. And, and what we we think was that, like a roller coaster, you are going down, 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 and then you have a, this kind of hope in the end. Uh, during the old soundtrack, be uh, super relaxing I think sometimes um, uh, uh, I come back and listen to uh, the whole soundtrack and I can lost track of what I'm doing or what I'm, I was thinking at the beginning of the listening right, so right. that was the idea I don't know if <laughs> uh, changes we'll, your changes your mood uh, as you listen uh, kind of unintentionally or subconsciously you know you doing one thing and it, it you know so you're getting kind of a it's kind of kind of puts you in a dark place and then <laughs> and then maybe yeah. later on um you know you kind of have this uplifted high spirits that's feeling. why so I like, yeah. and this is interesting because that's why also we put uh my and circles uh in well the track in the, uh, the, the start menu of the game and the um, post menu uh, so uh, that uh, like meditation tracks, <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so we wanted you to um, before the game to, if you want to, uh, just before the start uh, to get in the mood, uh, to uh, like uh, clear what were you listening or doing before, um, f- uh, slow your time and then enter the game. Get then, get the well, deep breathing like, started, and you know, slow, really yeah, start working on your zen. Exactly, and just relax, slow your heart rate, and all of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, well, of course, because of the, of the times we are living in, uh, everything is so fast. But Greece, what us to you is just three hours, four hours of your time to see just one screen and listen to just one music, not to skip music, not to change from a screen to another. What, I suppose that that was the main point of Nomada, just to um, use your time for this in, and get and experience something that for them at least and for me is beautiful. So then you can come back for uh, to everything else, but it's just three hours of that yeah. <laughs> without That's interruption. So we should start going to those uh, those anxiety meetup classes and offering them to play this game and maybe it'll it'll <laughs> give them some resolution <laughs> probably <laughs> anyways so um I, that kind of wraps up our show we've got a lot of really great information from you guys so today we covered Greece on the nintendo switch and multi-platform for pc and mac through steam composed by berlinist studios uh marco Gemma, thank you guys so much for coming on to chat with us it's been a lot of fun very awesome to hear your thoughts on some of these tracks yeah it's really always incredible for us to hear both the perspectives and the process that that all of the various composers that come on our show talk about because there are some commonalities but everybody has such a different way of thinking about it that it really makes it just i think that's where the joy of for me a lot of these shows come from right right i can second that you know everybody has their own view it's very personal and um there's nobody who could explain it better than you so it, it's it's an honor to be uh able to talk to you guys and we're we're just so very thankful that you um made time out of your busy schedules to come chat with us well thanks to you we it was an honor also for us to you know to have the opportunity to express uh, you know uh, how the process was and everything and we we you've been very nice so we've been really at ease and it was very interesting conversation. <laughs> and Marco, thank you for uh, for 
taking the, the, the early train to, to come to come be on the show. The worst part is for me get, getting late to the show. And but sorry, I'm really sorry. Oh, no, 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 uh, no. But it's all good. We're, we're glad Brian's just giving you a hard time. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> um, if you guys want to know more about our show, you can find us online at pixelatedaudio.com for our show notes, our track list. Um, we will have a link to the album, which you can purchase on uh, Bandcamp and also uh, Apple Music. Uh, that's how I've been listening to it. But uh, we'll be purchasing uh, a few copies, maybe some to give away. And if you want to check out some of our past episodes, we have a massive catalog, 106 prior to this one. So uh, definitely a lot of content out there. Anything you can think of off the top of your head? No, uh, I think we have 106 episodes. Wait, you got to think of one. <laughs> I can't think of anything specific right now, but uh, it's also almost one in the morning. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we've got uh, Gemma's dog barking in the background, so we'll make sure that yeah, stays in the Yeah, did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think we should ask, do you have any final things you wanted to say, uh, future projects we should watch out for? Uh, where can we find your, your music? Well, just, um, you know, after these projects, I think we're just taking a short break. But obviously, we have things in mind. And if you want to check our work or our future works, you can check on our web page, uh, Berlinist uh, Music, and, and also on Bandcamp. So we will be updating information and, and projects we can, you know, participate on or just uh, release in the future. Right. Yeah, Gemma is right. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you guys interested in maybe composing for more video game soundtracks? Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. For me, it was uh, what what made made Greece for me interesting was working um, with with Gemma, with Luigi, with with Nomada, uh, with with Ruben. I mean, uh, in, oh, <laughs> barking again <laughs> in, in the in the independent industry. I don't know. For me, it was the first experience and it was really great. People, uh, I don't know, so I would love to um, go on and of course Gemma and Luigi, but maybe we want to uh, stay in the independent industry <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah, because it's um, yeah, too, too kind. Hopefully Nomada will, will make a new game in the future? I don't know. Uh, we will be waiting for them. Well, when you do, when you do, um, send us a, an email so we can talk about that one as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and okay. I'll definitely be following your work. Uh, honestly, Brian told me about you guys and, and a week ago I you know, totally hadn't even heard of you and now I'm really... How, how many times have you listened to the soundtrack? Yeah. Uh, probably like three or four, at least. All the way through? Yeah. 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 I, I, I pretty much had it on just repeat over and over. So it's it's thank it's really so good much. stuff. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We didn't expect this, uh, to be honest, uh, in general. So uh, we are overwhelmed for uh, about everything. We should be. You guys <laughs> deserve it. For that, <laughs> great okay. job. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We do have one final track we want to take out the show with, and hope you hopefully you guys can share um, just one last word on it. It's called Komorebi, and um, in Japanese, this actually means like the kind of sunlight passing through tree leaves and maybe like a, a forest or something just kind of those little beams of light uh coming into kind of pouring into a dark place it's an excellent track and i wanted to make sure we had this uh at least so you guys could check it out um yes the idea here is um, it's the only track of uh, the, the soundtrack that is more um uh, I don't know, like a fable. <laughs> it sounds like a fable. Sad fable, of course, but uh, like a fable. And not like uh, an ambient soundtrack. Um, amb uh, sorry, an ambient uh, track. Uh, that's because of the NPC, the little guy you find in the forest. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we want to play it to uh, take a break and and prepare a soundtrack that was, a, sorry, a song that was uh, at the same time like uh, expressing friendship, but also you leave uh, that friend and go, uh, and you will go on with uh, in your uh, progression. Uh, so it, uh, it, it, it's 
super easy in terms of uh, keyboards, but we want to, we wanted to develop a, a big string uh, structure in the second part of the track um, to get the player, uh, as I was explaining before, um, slowly to the process of the uh, of getting more hope, more sensation of uh, happiness. Uh, but yes, more or less for me, Komorebi is like um, another a break from the game at the moment, and as a more medi meditation track uh, that anticipate the uh, the tower uh, scene in the game, and then the the, the bird uh, part. So it was important for uh, for us to give it, uh, give the player a break in terms of sadness and mm -hmm. <laughs> and put that uh, that kind of uh, Japanese uh, uh, sound that we all uh, uh, we love to mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's also is reflected in the, in you know in the name of some of the tracks uh, you know Mai or Komorebi Unagi or other um, so yes we wanted to create like as Marco said like you know like a tail you know, style and, and to give a break to the player uh, the first part of the song is also so uh, minimalistic because we wanted to give space to the sound effects. Um, sound effects from Komorebi are recorded in Kyoto. So, uh, oh wow! Uh, w yes, and they are um, the birds of the forest uh, were recorded by Ruben in Japan. Uh, so we wanted to give. And we tried a lot during um, during the process of uh, creating Santa to give space to sound effects and to get the player the possibility to notice them in, in the game. Um, it's important because sometimes during the interview uh, you get scared like me right now and <laughs> you talk like uh, sometimes no sense but then when you come back and think about what you say you, you remember gotta, that. Yeah, you gotta re-remember. <laughs> yeah, the, the right answer. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's important. In, in uh, Here is the, I think in the in the game is the biggest part in which you can uh, listen to carefully to the sound effects to just uh, get them uh, alone wow yeah i was gonna say those birds do sound pretty japanese so good job no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 All right. Good job, good job, Ruben. <laughs> good job, Ruben. Good job, Ruben. Maybe uh, next time, next the game you guys work on, we'll we'll have to get Ruben on as well. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, yeah. again, thank you guys so much. Uh, the track taken us out you. is Como Erebi, and uh, we'll see you guys back in a few weeks for the next episode.
Thank you.